Hey everybody, how's it going? For today's video, let's take an up close and personal, in-depth look at the second generation Dodge Charger SRTA. With the refreshed 2015 Charger on the horizon, I decided to make this in-depth comprehensive overview and review of the second generation Charger SRTA produced from 2012 through 2014. We'll start it up and take it out for a thorough test drive, compare the SRT and RT, including sound clips, while highlighting performance data, improvements, and unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Hendrick BMW North Lake, located at the Hendrick Luxury Auto Mall in Charlotte, North Carolina, for providing the Charger SRT8 featured in today's in-depth review. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. And as you can see, the SRT also features standard remote start. Now this exterior color is known as bright white, and comes paired with an all-black interior with combination leather and microfiber suede across the doors, as well as the seat metal. Along with that smart key system, the Charger in general also features a standard remote push button ignition system by the silver accent button in the dash. To start, all you have to do is just put your foot on the brake and tap the button to go. Simple as that. When the redesigned Charger RT and V6 was launched for 2011, a new electric power steering system was introduced that promised better overall fuel economy by reducing load on the powertrain. The SRT, on the other hand, retains a conventional hydraulic setup that featured a redesigned steering pump to deliver a more connected feel than the outgoing car and improve on-center response, while offering a more direct and engaging drive than a typical electro-hydraulic setup. It's all routed through an SRT-specific, leather-wrapped, thick-bolstered, multifunction steering wheel with perforations across the sides, satin aluminum trim with SRT logo in the bottom spoke, and subtle touches of chrome brightwork. Despite what you may think, the Charger is quite easy to drive. While it's no sports car, the steering provides a nice balance of everyday comfort with enough resistance to give it a precise, direct feel. Overall, I thought it was responsive and relatively nimble for its size. In other words, it feels somewhat smaller than the outside dimensions would initially suggest. The SRT steering does have more of a natural feeling than the electric setup in the RT, but I didn't think it was a big difference. I love the look and feel of this unique steering wheel, as no matter what angle you're turning at, you still have a thick, bolstered area to grab onto, unlike the smooth, uniform wheel in the standard car. Another thing you'll likely notice about the second generation Charger is how quiet the interior is, thanks to extra sound insulation and acoustic laminated glass. 
It's a relaxing environment overall with the availability of just about every piece of modern tech you can think of. Ride quality in the SRT is definitely on the stiff side, especially when you're in sport mode. It's not punishing, but you'll definitely notice rougher roads more often than you would in an RT that's also equipped with 20 inch wheels. That being said, the Charger RT is a bit more taut than a 300C, but in my opinion, it's still quite comfortable for daily use. Smaller diameter wheels and some of the lesser trim levels may improve ride quality marginally, but if you're looking for a softer ride, a 300 is a better bet. As far as the gearbox, the 5-speed automatic continued through the second generation, with the SRT receiving unique programming for more responsive gear changes. You even had the added benefit of aluminum panel shifters mounted behind the steering wheel for manual shifting, in addition to the standard auto stick manumatic feature. Drivers can adjust transmission mapping between normal and track, activated within the infotainment system that I'll highlight later in the video. This is also tied with the SRT8's adaptive damping suspension with three modes, auto, sport, and track. While in auto mode, handling behavior is based on a variety of factors from steering angle, throttle position, speed, lateral acceleration, and more, firming up or relaxing the shocks as needed for balance between comfort and sport. Selecting Sport locks the dampers to a higher rate of rebound and compression for a firmer ride and tire profile for more agile maneuvering. Activating Track Mode simultaneously combines the Sport Mode's tighter dampers with the transmission's Track Mode. Giving the Charger the ability to hold gears while in manual mode so you have full manual control over the shifting schedule across the power band. Launch control is standard, activated by pressing the electronic stability control button twice. Then, while keeping your foot on the brake, hit the accelerator, the car will maintain an optimal launch RPM of 1825, and when ready, release the brake with full throttle applied for maximum takeoff. The SRT8 features an active exhaust system that opens up more under throttle for a significant increase in sound compared to a standard RT. It should also go without saying that the SRT is quick, very quick. The transmission performs well, but doesn't offer the quickness and responsiveness as more modern 8-speed automatics like found in other Chrysler Group products. Thankfully, the V8 chargers will finally receive that 8-speed for the 2015 refresh. And so, we're going to flip on the automatic xenon projector headlamps, fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Both the driver's side windows are fully automatic, with laminated glass for better safety and noise isolation. And, we're going to check out the exterior. Upon closing the door, the interior of the vehicle will also chime, letting you notice lost detection of the proximity key fob. For Chrysler Group, SRT has always been what AMG is to Mercedes-Benz, a division dedicated to providing over-the-top, highly tuned vehicles based on the brand's current model offerings. It stands for Street and Racing Technology and features a classic, old-school yet modern performance philosophy that you can see and feel with each new SRT product. Since 2006, the SRT8 has represented the highest level of performance available in the Charger lineup. While mechanically similar to the Chrysler 300C SRT8, the Charger, like the Dodge brand in general, delivers more of a dynamic outlook with a distinct muscle car feel. While the first generation Charger saw great success, it still wasn't perfect. Build quality never was something to write home about, and if you didn't spring for the SRT, the exterior was rather subdued and perhaps anonymous when considering the car's historical lineage. As controversial as the four-door Charger was, the subsequent revitalization of the retro-inspired Challenger, which rode on a shortened variant of the Charger's LX platform, gave buyers the choice of two modern muscle cars. If you needed the extra space but still had a thirst for top-tier performance, the Charger SRT8 was the ideal solution over the two-door Challenger. In 2011, Dodge launched the second-generation Charger, which, along with the redesigned Chrysler 300, represented the most thoroughly redesigned Mopar vehicle since Fiat's initial involvement in 2009, debuting new technologies, infotainment innovations, and an impressive overall value. While the overall platform remained the same, there were numerous improvements made to the suspension, steering, and powertrains, including a more powerful version of the 5.7-liter Hemi V8 in the RT and the new base 3.6-liter Pentastar V6. This gave the Charger significantly more dynamism. 
It feels refined, well dialed in, and downright sporty for a big sedan. While the 370 horsepower RT is no slouch, the performance dial was turned up to 11 in 2012 with the reintroduction of the Charger SRT8. The highlight of the second generation SRT is the new 392 cubic inch 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that first debuted in the 2011 Challenger SRT. Compared to the outgoing 6.1 liter V8, the new 392 benefits from increased horsepower and torque by 45 and 50 pound feet respectively with peak torque now available at 200 fewer revolutions per minute. A number of enhancements included a cylinder deactivation feature and improved fuel economy by as much as 15% in the city and 25% on the highway. In an effort to increase power and efficiency, larger intake and exhaust ports were used along with a new composite intake to replace the previous aluminum design. Variable valve timing allows the cams to operate independently, varying with throttle loads and tailoring for power or economy as needed. The all-new active valve exhaust system allows the car to run under four-cylinder power through a greater range of engine speeds, for the benefit and economy while cruising. Helping maximize low-end torque, improved by 80 pound-feet at 2900 RPM, is an active intake manifold with high-lift camshaft and cam phasing. While the engine is an impressive aspect, the most dramatic difference is the retro-inspired body. On the standard car, including the RT, cues such as the twin hood and side profile scallops, full length hockey stick LED tail lamps, and long profile harken back to the late 1960s. Even the sloping roof line out back carry vestigial buttresses that surround the rear glass. It reminds me a lot of the original Charger concept of 1999, for those of you who remember, a stunning design that also incorporated four doors but featured a much sleeker profile. The Charger is a bold exercise in automotive aggression, far different from the more subdued 300, especially when it comes to the blacked out angular headlamps, and I really think that's what Dodge and Chrysler were going for and has given people the option of two distinct models, one geared more towards performance and sport, and one for luxury. Exterior fit and finish was also greatly improved, featuring tighter body panel gaps and 0.3 inch less wheel arch gap. The raked windshield was pushed back by 3 inches, accentuating front end length. Visibility was also improved by 15% thanks to stamped door frames and thinner A-pillars. Another notable improvement is that the roof is now laser braids to the side of the body, eliminating visible spot welds and subsequent moldings to cover it up. In my opinion, even the paint finishes feature deeper gloss and luster than before. The SRT differs in a big way from the standard RT, wearing much more aggressive clothing while being more aerodynamic for high-speed stability. Up front, a robust front fascia features a larger air dam below, brake cooling ducts, chrome accent and projector fog lamps, and a large chin spoiler. The center grille is blacked out entirely with a slimmer crosshair grille wearing a prominent SRT badge. The hood carries a massive air extractor that works to pull out hot air from the engine bay and reduce air pressure that builds up up front. Subtle 6.4 liter badging on the fender highlights displacement. While a black roof was optional on chargers at one point, this black hood would stun after the fact. Across the sides, the side skirts jut out further, highlighting the SRT's lower ride height. At the rear, the fascia is much more defined, with flared sides and vertical extensions of the taillight surrounds. A modified spoiler graces the deck lid, while an aggressive lower diffuser highlights twin chrome exhaust tips signature to the SRT. The Charger SRT8 receives its own unique wheel and tire package consisting of 20 by 9 inch forged aluminum wheels with black painted pockets and polished face, proudly displaying the SRT logo. They're wrapped in 245-45 Goodyear Eagle all-season tires, able to hold up to 0.89g of lateral cornering forces. As far as the brakes, the SRT receives large internally ventilated and slotted discs with four piston red Brembo aluminum calipers at each corner. Up front, there's 14.2 inch discs while the rear carries 13.8 inch discs. With this setup, the SRT is able to stop from 60 miles an hour in an impressive 108 feet. For extra safety, there's a collision anticipation feature that can detect if you're about to make a panic stop to avoid a potential collision. The system preloads the brakes to provide immediate deceleration response. The underbody also integrates brake cooling ducts to reduce fade under harder use. The fully independent coilover suspension carries double wishbones in front with a 30mm anti-sway bar and a 5-link design out back with a smaller 18mm anti-sway bar. Overall length is 200.3 inches with a width of 72.4 inches and a height of 58.3 inches, running on a 120.2 inch wheelbase. 
Total curb weight is around 4,300 pounds with a weight distribution between the front and rear of 54% and 46% respectively. So let's go ahead and pop the hood. Like we talked about earlier, the highlight of the second generation SRT8 is the new 392 cubic inch 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that first debuted in the 2011 Challenger SRT. And like the 6.1 liter before it, the block is also painted in Hemi orange. The engine features a tried and true old school push rod operated overhead valve design with an iron block, aluminum heads, port fuel injection, a compression ratio of 10.9 to 1 and two valves per cylinder. It produces 470 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 470 pound-feet of torque at 4,300 RPM with a red line of 6,400 RPM. This translates to a 0 to 60 time around 4.2 seconds and quarter mile times around 12.6 seconds at 115 miles an hour. Top speed is drag limited to 175 miles an hour. As far as the fuel economy, the SRT carries a 19.1 gallon tank. While running on recommended 91 octane premium fuel, expect a range between 14 miles to a gallon in the city and 23 on the highway. The interior of the second generation Charger is light years ahead of its predecessor in terms of build quality, safety, materials used, and overall comfort. Especially with the RT Max and SRT8, which come with every option available, including some unique bits on the SRT, which we'll cover in just a second. The first generation Charger was plagued with subpar materials inside and less than ideal ergonomics. With the redesign, the SRT8 boasts some of the best build quality you can buy in a Chrysler Group vehicle, aside from the slightly fancier 300. The door panels emulate the curves of the body scallops and are almost entirely wrapped in soft touch material. Across the midsection, the SRT carries the microfiber suede padding which replaces the standard leatherette trim in some of the upper trim levels, highlighted by curved accent stitching. You'll also notice many of the chrome brightwork pieces found in the regular cars are replaced by satin chrome in the SRT. Your two-person memory, power locks, windows, mirrors, and fuel cap release are all located on the driver's door with an abundance of storage down below and water bottle holder. The seats are specific to the SRT and feature 12-way power adjustment including 4-way power lumbar, wrapped in a combination of supple Napa leather and perforated Alcantara. Double accent stitching adds another dimension of detail in addition to the unique SRT logos embossed on the backrest. They provide a great amount of comfort, come standard with heating and ventilated functions, not to mention heated rear seats, with adjustable headrests and adjustable seat belts. Down below you have adjustable aluminum pedals specific to the SRT, logoed all-weather floor mats, driver's knee airbag, and a power tilt telescoping heated steering wheel. The entire upper portion of the dash is also padded, with the SRT-specific carbon weave engine turn aluminum trim across the entire speedometer and infotainment cluster and center console all finished off with a dark cloth headliner and sunroof. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. There's a rev limiter in park and neutral around 4,000 RPM. So let's go ahead and shut her up. A 
Available exclusive to the SRT is a high-performance 900-watt 19-speaker Harman Kardon surround sound system with 12-channel amplifier and included 10-inch subwoofer out back. It's all routed through the excellent Uconnect 8.4-inch Garmin-based navigation telemetrics mobile media interface. Cloth wrap bay pillars, grip handles up top, the visors are also padded and feature illuminated vanity mirrors, but for a little bit of extra convenience, they also slide out further and there's an extension. Standard auto dimming rear view mirror, and in the top stack you have three position garage home link, LED interior illumination, as well as reading lamps, and a padded sunglass container. Not to mention, one touch open and close automatic sunroof with a little wind deflector that pops up. Now the Uconnect system has also seen its share of improvements over the years, while it really hasn't changed in its functionality, they're pretty much the same between really 2011 through 2014. The menus changed, the voice recognition system has been improved a little bit, and some of the menus have been altered slightly, but all in all the functionality is identical. Right now, we're in our main media screen where we can bring up your iPod, auxiliary integration, USB, SD card input, as well as hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio. Right now we have a CD in the drive, rewind, fast forward, change in the track in the middle, pause, browsing the available tracks, shuffling through playlists, and more depending on if you have your MP3 player connected, repeating songs, and you can also split the screen with your navigation, more detailed song information, as well as the different tracks. Your audio adjustments are located down below with your equalizer, balance and fade, speed adjusted volume, music cleanup, powered by Grace Note, album artwork and more, as well as activating the Harman Kardon surround sound. Of course, your radio activated via that button there can go between AM, FM, as well as standard satellite radio. You can also split the map with your radio. All of your preset stations will be located up top in addition to satellite radio and you can browse between categories, various stations, as well as manual tuning, traffic and weather, and more. The controls highlight your heated and ventilated seating, heated steering wheel, turning the screen off if you didn't want it on, as well as activating the vehicle's sport and track modes for the suspension and transmission. Whatever mode you're currently in will automatically show up in that little digital display. Climate control, standard dual zone with one touch automatic, front and rear defrost, different zones, bring up your controls again, as well as fan speed in the middle and sinking the temperature on both sides. There's also manual controls located right beneath with your basic functions, fan speed in the middle, temperature, as well as the defrost functions. And in these screens you'll also notice your clock, outside temperature, and your media will also show up in the top. Your Garmin-based navigation system, this is one of the systems that's also been improved. My menu and my 2012 charger is a little bit different than this one, but again, same functionality. Very quick and easy to use. And a pretty high-res map. Like I said, with real-time traffic updates. Built-in calculator. If you're familiar with any Garmin systems, it's pretty much identical to those. Your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, it automatically asks you to pair it, otherwise it'll automatically connect to your Bluetooth device once it's paired. Favorite contacts located up top, you can put in a phone book, also synced with your phone, dial, message, things like mute, transfer, or joining calls if you're doing a three-way call or so, and a lot of that is controlled through the voice recognition system. Sirius Travel Link is kind of like a concierge service that's separate from your satellite radio service, and it shows movie listings, fuel prices, real-time weather updates, and more. The vehicle settings include all the personalization options, and it really goes quite in-depth. Probably one of my favorite aspects of this system. But SRT specific is the SRT performance pages where, again, you control the vehicle's sport, track modes, 
various timers, 0 to 60, quarter miles, and more for track days, a G-force meter, different status gauges, there's two different menus, well this one's a little bit more in-depth, this screen shows your instantaneous horsepower, torque, the gear you're in, digital speed readout, and your oil pressure. Handling. And you can also customize it, different pictures, colors. Definitely a pretty cool setup. Continuing on down below. Your climate controls, like I talked about earlier, single disc and dash CD player, traction off to the far right, and your hazard switch. Basic radio knobs, tune, scroll, volume, and power up top as well. A little storage down below with a 12 volt power outlet, another pocket in the center console, as well as two heated and cold cup holders. Not to mention a full padded center console with a removable tray, coin storage, auxiliary USB, and another power outlet. There's also ambient illumination, nice so you can see inside easier. As far as the steering wheel, on the right hand side it's your cruise control, as well as adaptive cruise activation. You can switch between regular cruise, if you don't want the car guiding you, or adaptive cruise, then power it on, and set the distance. On the left hand side are the controls for the driver info system, as well as your hands-free telephone and voice commands. Help. You can interrupt this help message at any time by pressing the voice button again. To play your music, say something like, change source to iPod. To listen to the radio, say something like, tune to 95.7 FM. Cancel. So like with other voice recognition systems, you can basically control everything from that system if you didn't want to fiddle with anything while driving. The driver info system is a pretty neat setup, and this has also been improved over the years. The 2011 screen was a little dated looking, but they came out with this red accent and more high res unit in 2012. Vehicle speed, trip computer, tire pressure monitoring system, vehicle information, various status gauges, you can also turn the menu off and bring up your SRT pages. The radio controls are located on the back of the steering wheel, this one corresponding to volume while the middle button changes the radio modes. On the left hand side changes your track, seek, as well as going between your different presets. Your high beams and automatic rain sensing windshield wipers are in the stock to the left. Overall, a very well-built interior. So let's go ahead and shut her down. You'll also notice that you can program the steering wheel to tilt up and down, respective to your memory setting when you power on or off the vehicle. You can do the same thing for the seat so it slides back to an exit function. And we're gonna check in the back seat. Just like the front, the back seat of the SRT it is also treated with the unique materials. While stylistically it's not overly different from the standard charger, it does have its unique trim such as the microfiber suede, color accent, stitching, and more. The back seats can also fold down if you'd like some more storage space, and I'll show that when we get to the trunk portion. Climbing into the back of the Charger is a cinch. Being a full-size vehicle, there's actually plenty of room back here. People over six feet might want to watch their head for the roofline when they're climbing in because since the Charger's roofline is a little bit more of a, a fastback shape coming down, it, it does cut into the headroom just a little bit, but it's not really an issue. Once you get inside, there's a plentiful amount of head space and leg space. I'm around five foot 10, five foot 11, and with a comfortable seating position for myself up front, I probably have, I'd say, three-ish inches of leg space and maybe an inch and a half or so of head space. Now, take note, the headliner actually ends right here. And what Dodge did, they put these little tent strips, I guess if you will, across the rear of the back window. So it still allows a little bit of light to come in. But when you have your head sitting back here, the sun isn't going to bake you. So that's a pretty nice feature. Backseat comfort is also really, really good for this particular class. 
Now this seat style, if my memory serves me correct, does not differ from the standard Charger seat aside from the middle um, microfiber suede perforated trim. You have plenty of lateral support down below and up above. And if you didn't notice that this was a bench, you'd actually feel like you were sitting in a bucket seat. There's a nice amount of lower back support, and it's firm without being too firm. There's plenty of give in the back cushion, especially in the bottom cushion. As far as back seat amenities, you have two storage pockets on the back of the seats, grip handles, coat hooks, and illumination. Of course, it's side curtain airbags to the rear passengers, and available two-stage heated seats, which pretty much come standard in all of the upper trim models of the Charger. 12 volt power outlet, interior ambient illumination at night provides a little bit of a blue glow inside, which is pretty cool. And you have a full padded armrest that also illuminates blue, so you can see the cup holders at night. And storage. Now the back headrests are nice and soft, and they are fixed in a comfortable position to where it's not pushing you forward too much while still providing a little bit of whiplash protection. You can sit a third person in the middle here. There's an adjustable third headrest, but legroom is going to be a little bit of a pinch, so I would recommend that for shorter individuals or just for short trips. So, let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle. The trunk can be opened three different ways, either via the remote fob, the button mounted on the dash, or this little button within the third brake light on the opposite side of the rear view camera. Once you have it open, it's around 16.3 cubic feet, which isn't huge, but it's not small. There's still plenty of space to either side, in addition to having the ability of folding down the rear seats to expand the cargo space all the way to the front. The trunk hinges are hidden within the compartment, so you don't have any worries about impeding on cargo space. The passenger seat also has the similar power adjustments, including power lumbar that you find in the driver's seat. The glove box is also locking, has a nice amount of space, two tier, lined in felt, along with illumination. The Dodge Charger SRT8 represents one of the best performance bargains you can buy, featuring great build quality and an impressive list of features. With the SRT Hellcat on the way, there'll be some exciting times in the near future as we see SRT taken to the next level. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Dodge Charger SRT8. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.